Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful sunny day. It is good to have you all here in person or joining us online. Just a reminder that we worship all together in spirit and in truth as one community across time and across space. So thank you for joining us. We're going to take a moment now to center ourselves with a deep breath. And we begin worship. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. On this first Sunday of August, as we look toward the beginning of a new school year for our kiddos and many of our adults, we also begin a new liturgy. This is called Service for a New Day by Mark Schweizer. If you're someone who likes to see notes as you're singing new music, you might want to grab one of the large print bulletins um, that does have all the music printed for you. But here we go. This is Service for a New Day. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son, sin of the world have mercy on us you are seated at the right hand of the father receive our prayer for you alone are the holy one you The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray for our time together in God's word. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You all may be seated. At this time, I'm going to invite any children we've got here to come on forward for the children's message. I love your excitement, Chloe. Love it. Come on down. Come on down. All right, we're actually going to sit 
down here today, if you want to come down here and sit with me. Because <clears throat> I want you guys to be able to see the screens. Okay. All right. So we are going to take a look at some pictures today. Have you guys heard of the James Webb Space Telescope? No? It's this really cool telescope that they just launched into space and they're taking pictures of really far away galaxies. And so I wanted to show you some of the pictures. I need you to sit up, please, Chloe. So we're going to show you some of the pictures up on the screen here. Oh. You do? Well, it's a galaxy, actually. That's the Andromeda galaxy. How beautiful is that? Yeah. Okay, I don't remember that, but cool. All right, let's show them the next picture. <gasps> Look at this one. This one's called the Cartwheel Galaxy. Do you see it? It looks sort of like a circle, but it looks like it's going around and around. So they called it the Cartwheel Galaxy. Because it looks like it's going around and around like a cartwheel. All right, one last picture. Let me show you this one. <gasps> I really love this one. This one's beautiful. What does it look like? It looks like a weasel. A weasel? It looks like an eye. Ah, uh, Ogden says it looks like an eye, which is what I thought it looked like too. I suppose you could see a weasel in that. Eye is what first came to mind for me. So this is actually, this is, this is called the Helix Nebula but it's also nicknamed God's Eye. So we have these really beautiful pictures about all of these stars and galaxies and, and wondrous things that we have, are seeing for the first time because of this telescope. Did you know, they're called, that one's called God's Eye. Did you know that we are not only made of dust, but we're made of stardust? <gasps> God made us using stardust. So all of that stuff that you see out there, some of that is inside of us. How? How? Because God said it, and it became so. It becomes from our body? Yep. God said, let there be a Chloe. And Chloe was made of stardust and water and, you know, blood and all of the things that make up you. Even muscles, yes. So, and bones, yes. So we've got stardust all throughout us. And so to remind us of this today, I wanted to do something that we normally do on Ash Wednesday. But I'm going to give you a little ash cross on your hands, only if you want it. If you don't want it, that's okay. Can you get up, Jay, so I can get my ashes? Here we go. You want one? All right, so this is to remember. Okay, put out your hand like this. All right. This is for you to remember that God made you special out of stardust. Here, I'm going to do you. Here we go. God made you special out of stardust. Can, do you want to do it? God made you special out of stardust. God made you special out of stardust. Do you want one? Cool. Okay. God made you special out of stardust. Do you want one, Kai? Oh, sure. Yes. God made you special out of stardust. Now, I have a special assignment for you guys. Can you come real close so I can whisper to you? Chloe desperately wants to do another person. All right, you go ahead, baby. 
And then it's time, after you pick your person, to go to children's church. So you're going to follow Miss Katie out. Go ahead, Chloe. Decisions, decisions. Whether they cross your hand or not, know that you are also made special by God with stardust. So. All right, kiddos, when you are all done, you can follow Miss Katie out to Children's Church. And Ogden's got the banner, so you know you can follow Ogden. Thank you for indulging me for a little bit of a longer of a children's sermon today. I've been really amazed by these pictures, so I really wanted to share them with the kiddos. Um, so today, for you all, the adults in the room, we have several readings. The gospel reading, I'm not actually talking about much today, okay? The gospel reading is sort of a string of Jesus sayings that Luke put together in one place. They vaguely relate, but the metaphors are all mixed up, and it's a little confusing if you try to read it as all one long piece. But the part I want you to focus on is near the beginning, and it says, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So what I want you to listen for through the rest of the readings is also, what else is God's good pleasure? Because God takes great pleasure in us, and I want you to listen for what the promises are and, and what it is that God's taking pleasure in today. Good? Let's take a deep breath. And listen for what God has to say to you this morning. Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Word of God word of life. Thanks be to God. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people chosen to be God's heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees all humankind. God sits firmly enthroned and watches all who dwell on the earth. God fashions all their hearts and observes all their deeds. Truly, your eye is upon those who fear you, O Lord, upon those who wait for your steadfast love to deliver their lives from death and to keep them alive in time of famine. Our innermost being waits for you, O Lord, our helper and our shield. Surely our heart rejoices in you. Even as 
as we place our hope in you. Our second reading, our second reading is from Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received the power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren because he considered God faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may have guessed already my fascination with these uh, James Webb telescope images, right? I'm guessing you probably have seen them, at least, you know, you saw three here today. But, even if you haven't, I'm going to invite you to go down the rabbit hole of the internet and look. Because there are some incredible images. You see galaxies in deep space and clearer pictures of closer stars, galaxies, nebulas, and more than we've ever seen before. It's been a humbling experience to marvel at those images. Even when I don't understand what I'm looking at, maybe especially when I don't understand what I'm looking at. And I've been amazed by what scientists have to say explaining each photo. One planetary nebula in the shape of a human eye, bright yellowish white surrounding a brilliant red center, is named Helix, or God's Eye Nebula. The web website even has a zoomable image of a cluster called Stefan's Quintet, allowing the visitor to zoom in again 
and again and again, revealing new details every time. Farther out photos show the most distant reaches of the universe yet captured by human telescopes. And scientists describe these as showing us the early universe. I, I have yet to wrap my brain around that one, how we can look back in time by looking at a photo from space. But I'm constantly amazed both by what I don't know and by human drive and ingenuity to keep discovering, keep pushing for more. And there is always more. The creation stories we have in Genesis don't do our vast universe justice. But that God created it all, I have no doubt. We will marvel in awe at this God, singing praise in our hymn of the day just after the sermon with these words. God who stretched the spangled heavens, infinite in time and place, flung the suns in burning radiance through the silent fields of space. As we look at these images of the continually expanding universe out there, it gives us a renewed sense of God's vastness and our smallness. What a wild thing it is that God made all of that incredibly wondrous, powerful, ancient universe and the smallest, tiniest detail of every creature on this planet. Even making us in God's image. Perhaps our being made in God's image is less about what we look like and more about what we do. That being made by a creator God in creator God's image, we are creative too. That we are invited to co-create with God who is still creating even now. For Abram, God actually promises co-creation in terms of procreation telling him to look up and count the stars if he's able. Even without any telescopes at that point, in the darkness of the ancient world, prior to electric light uh, pollution, the task would have been impossible to count them all. And yet that's the promise for how many descendants yet childless Abram would have. That God takes notice of one man in the vast universe is astounding in itself. Giving a promise that is completely unrealistic to that one man is a step beyond. Because it shows intimate care. What we heard today was in fact the third time God had made this promise to Abram. And it had yet to be fulfilled. But each time God promised, Abram believed and got moving to where God told him to go. God gave the promise over and over, though, because Abram did doubt. He wasn't perfect. His faith in God didn't prevent him from taking matters into his own hands and deciding what was best when God moved too slowly. Faith does not cast out all doubt. Abram needed reminding, and God proved faithful by reminding and redirecting him each time, caring through the wavering of a man who continued to follow in spite of his doubt. Abram continued. promise from God may not be for procreation. It might not be. But God does still promise co-creation. Even as individuals in the vast population of this planet, a mere speck in the vast stretches of space, God still takes notice and makes promises to us. A promise that we are God's beloved children no matter what. 
that we have a call to co-create with God in a unique and beautiful way. Maybe that looks like being scientists that makes the next big discovery or designing the telescope that brings us even closer images from farther out distances in space. Maybe that looks like creating community, a chosen family of those around you who need the care. Being a visual artist, painting or sculpting or photographing or creating mixed media pieces to make people think or take a different view. Birthing a new novel or nonfiction work or a play. Inventing new technology or improving what we've already got. Sewing, quilting, knitting, or crocheting with love for others. Finding new medicinal techniques or working on new pharmaceuticals. Building new outreach avenues to help those in need. The possibilities are endless and exciting, especially since it's God's call for us to do that creative work. We may at times doubt like Abram, and that's okay. God remains faithful to us and continues to call us. Do not be afraid to co-create with this faithful founder of the universe. We continue our song, We are children in your likeness, share inventive powers with you. Great creator, still creating, show us what we yet may do. We sing this prayer together. With the whole church on earth, we confess our faith, this faith in which we baptize. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We enter into our time of prayer, and we have our, our usual people on the prayer list today, uh, Jimmy and Brian, and we included still the Kentucky flood victims. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your church. Equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. This week we lift to you the people and ministry of Peace Lutheran Church in Bessie. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn by strife and violence. Raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Remind them that they are made of stardust. Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you, especially Brian, Jimmy, the Kentucky flood victims, and all those whose names our hearts whisper to you now. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon this community. Strengthen the outreach ministries of this congregation and all those who care for those in need. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As they placed their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You're invited to share a sign of that peace with one another.
Amen. We pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should always and everywhere give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we wait his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God, and believe it or not, this morning you are the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated for now. A note of welcome to all our visitors, which I did not say earlier, but thank you for joining us today. Know that you are welcome here in this place to receive communion. It is Jesus who invites you and Jesus who gives you his self in this meal. You'll come forward at the usher's invitation and receive bread in your hand uh, by, the, by the middle aisle. You'll receive bread in your hand and move to the side and receive a cup. On the outside of the tray is wine, and on the inside there's a white rectangle that has grape juice. We believe that Jesus is truly present in all these forms of communion that we take today. If you are in need of a gluten-free wafer as well, you can let me know that when you come forward. 
If you do not wish to take communion today, that is fine. You can still come forward with your hands held, and we would be happy to give you a blessing. Um, if you can't come forward to receive communion, we will bring communion to you in your pew. Just let the usher know when they come by that you would like us to do that. I believe that's all my announcements. Again, all are welcome at this table.
Let us pray. Living God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated for our announcements. First note is that we had our last kids night out of the summer this past Friday, and it was a blast. We had nine kids and, uh, I don't know, five adults, five helpers. Um, it was a really wonderful event, and, and we thank you. We hope we get to uh, continue some form of it in the, in the fall or winter. So um, we want to say thank you to Katie, who I don't know if she's in here right at the moment. She went out with Jay. Okay. <laughs> our, our wonderful children's ministry coordinator this summer is a college student, and she is going back to college this coming week. So this is our last Sunday with her here uh, with us on a regular basis, and we, uh, when she comes back in, we will say a thank you for the wonderful job that she did with our kiddos this summer. Uh, kiddos, are you listening? Yeah? I need you to come up, and if you brought your backpack, bring your backpack with you. And if you didn't bring your backpack, it's okay. Just come on up anyway. And if we have any teachers or school personnel in the room, please feel free to come up as well. Come on up, Chloe. Come on. Oh, that's so nice of you to bring them for them. Thanks. Okay. Jay, you need to stay up here with me, bud. That is fine. The blessing will extend to your school backpack when you get one. Okay. All right. We've got a librarian. We've got a teacher. We've got another librarian. Uh, we got lots of students up here. So thank you. Thank you for coming up, you guys. This is a really exciting time because school is about to start, right? Some of us start, that's fine. Some of us start this week, some of us start a little later, and that's okay. The blessing will still be good. So what I want you to do, okay, what I want you to do is I want you to reach out and touch somebody else's backpack. You can touch down here, one of their backpacks. Reach out, reach out, reach out. Touch it, touch it, touch it. And those of you out there, I'm going to have you raise your hands in blessing over these kiddos' backpacks and, and, and teachers and librarians. We are going to say a prayer together. Are you ready? You ready to pray, Ellie? Good job. All right, let's pray. God of wisdom, we give you thanks for schools and classrooms and for the teachers and students that fill them each day. We thank you for this new beginning, for our new books and new ideas. We thank you for sharpened pencils, pointy crayons, and crisp blank pages waiting to be filled. We thank you for the gift of making mistakes and trying again. Help us to remember that asking the right questions is often as important as giving the right answers. Today we give you thanks for these, your children, and we ask you to bless them with curiosity, understanding, and respect. May their backpacks be a sign to them that they have everything they need to learn and grow this year in school and in Sunday school and in the library and wherever they find themselves. May they be guided by your love. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, who as a child in the temple showed his longing to learn about you, and as an adult taught by story and example your great love for us. Amen. You guys know that we love you so much, so whenever you see these backpacks, I'm going to invite you to remember that we go with you wherever you go, okay? And I also have a sticker. So if you guys have a notebook, a favorite notebook, or a water bottle, or something you want to put this on, this says, you've got this, and God's got you, okay? So you're going to remember how much God loves you, and how much we love you too, okay? Oh, let me give you three. There you go. There you go, Jay. Yes? There you go. You did. Okay. You did. I do have extra stickers, so if there's anybody who didn't come up who has a student in their life or a teacher in their life, you guys can grab one as well. So, 
Uh, uh, Katie, you were running around after my rug rat when we were saying thank you to you in here. So, hey kiddos, can we turn around and say, look at Katie and say, thank you, Katie! Thank you. Woo! <laughs> we will miss you very much when you are not here, but we will be thinking about you and hoping that you are having a great time at school. All right. She's going to OU. Oklahoma University. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> All right. <laughs> you know what? As distracting as these children can be, I delight in having them here. This is a wonderful gift to have little people in our sanctuary with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. All done. All right. <laughs> Uh, one final note, too, that if you haven't picked up your financial statement, it's out on a table out there. If you are a friend or a member who has been giving regularly prior to this month, um, then those are out there. Otherwise, we will mail them to you if you haven't picked them up this week. Okay? All right. We are going to say a blessing over all of these people who just said a blessing over you, students. Okay? So we're going to invite them to stand. Come on up. All right, Jay, walk out that way, bud. Everybody walk out that way. Yep, everybody up. And you're going to put your hand up like this, Chloe. Put your hand up like this. Redeemer. And spirit. And spirit. Bless you. Bless you. Comfort you. And show, you and show you the path of life, path of life. This, day this day and always. And always. Amen. Amen. Very good. Thank you. Send forth by God's blessing our true faith confessing the people of God from this dwelling take leave. The supper is ended, but now be extended. The fruits of this service in all who believe. The seed of Christ's teaching, receptive souls reaching, shall blossom in action for God and for shall incite us, your love shall unite us to work for your kingdom and answer.